Okay, good job. Um, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Holly Weyer. I'm the Marine Solution Program Manager at the Ocean Protection Council. Um, can you all hear me okay at the end of the room? Um, so structurally, my presentation is actually quite similar to Claire's. I'm going to go into a bit of what the OPC does, some of the research we funded, um, how we look at microplastics policy broadly, and where we're going from here. Uh, so the OPC is a cabinet level policy body um, that's nested within the Natural Resources Agency. Um, there's two br broad agencies in California that deal with environmental things. One is Cal EPA, which is what the water boards are under, and the other is the Natural Resources Agency, which is what my agency is under. Um, we are, unlike the water board, we're not a regulatory or permitting agency. Um, however, our work informs regulatory agencies as they address new topics like microplastics. The OPC works in four main ways. Um, we develop, recommend, and, and assist with implementing policy. Uh, we coordinate among state agencies. Um, we seek and leverage funding for innovative research and catalytic pilot projects. And we inform government decision making with the best available science. So we've started doing some funding um, on important and innovative research on microplastics. Uh, most recently, we provided funding for adding a data communications element to a really big project that's going on in San Francisco Bay right now um, called the San Francisco Bay Microplast Microplastics Project. Um, and that funding is going to be getting all of the data that they're pulling together from that research project into the state databases. Um, before this funding came along, the state databases had essentially a section for microplastics, but you, it was just like a particle count. You couldn't really say whether it was a fiber, what color it was, um, all these different things about the plastic that we really need to know to make good policy decisions. Um, so this funding is helping to put that kind of data infrastructure into the state databases and get that data out where it's publicly available. Uh, the second pro project is um, research that's looking at microplastics as a potential vector for terrestrial pathogens to enter shellfish. Um, we've known for a while that the larger size plastics can be vectors for invasive species um, to move around the different ocean, the world's oceans, um, but this is a fairly new look at how microplastics can do something similar. Uh, that project just started and it should be wrapping up in a couple of years. So taking a step back at how we think about microplastics and policy and what we can do about them, um, we really can intervene at three different points in the process. Um, ideally, we would do some kind of a source control measure um, where we would change like where microplastics are allowed to be used in products, like things like the micro, micro, micro bee ban, sorry. <laughs> um, or we would do something like changing how textiles are designed to prevent fiber shedding. Um, then moving along, we could do pathway capture, which is where you would do something like putting a filter on the end of a washing machine, or doing some kind of an intervention at a wastewater treatment plant, or some other kind of capture device while it's essentially en route to getting into the ocean and our water bodies. Um, the last thing you could potentially do is a cleanup, and I have a question mark on that because I don't even know if that's possible right now from a technical standpoint. Um, it certainly would be the most expensive option, and <coughs> it would probably get be the least effective. That being said, for all those different options, we still have a lot of, of science questions on how to do them effectively. Um, for example, for source control, uh, kind of like what Clara was mentioning earlier, we aren't really sure which types of microplastics are most harmful. They come in this wide array of colors and shapes and sizes. And so getting a handle on which size class of microplastics should we target, um, should we be looking at fibers versus spheres, that sort of thing can be really helpful. Um, we also aren't sure which like true sources of microplastics produce the, produces the most. Um, in the case of, say, microfibers, people really think about apparel a lot, but that's just because it's been frequently studied and people are looking at washing machine effluent a lot. Um, but, you know, microfibers can come off of upholstery, carpets, all sorts of other things. So we, aren't, we don't really have a great handle on exactly what true source is getting the microplastics out into the environment. 
Um, kind of, we're in a similar place with pathways. Um, there's been a lot of talk about wastewater because wastewater is comparatively more studied. Um, it doesn't mean that there's no microplastics in stormwater, it's just that no one's really been looking there or the, the information that we're getting from stormwater hasn't really hit the national news yet. Um, and then again, not really sure if cleanup is possible. That being said, policymakers are very eager to act on this issue. Um, there's a lot of information in the popular press coming about, out about you know, microplastics in our tap water and our bottled water. Um, and I think because they're on the receiving end of so much media attention on microplastics, they don't necessarily have a good sense of where the science is at. And what we really need is standardized and validated methods. Um, to have a better sense of, you know, what areas are the most polluted with microplastics and where we can go from here. Which brings me to what the OPC is doing. Um, so in 2018, we adopted a California Ocean Litter Prevention Strategy, and this is a big uh, key document for us in terms of what we're going to do on our plastics work over the next six years. Um, we had a few broad goals in that strategy for what OPC was going to do, including larger size plastics and fishing gear, but I'm just going to focus on our microplastics goal, goals right now. Um, so our microplastics work can be divided into three broad, broad categories. Uh, the first is to validate and standardize monitoring methods, um, then fund research to characterize sources, pathways, ambient concentrations, uh, risk assessments, and impacts, and then finally recommend policy. Um, so as that ocean litter strategy process was wrapping up, and actually I think I jumped ahead a little too quick, quickly, um, we've started the implementation process on the ocean litter strategy. We're a year in. Um, we've been coordinating with our stakeholders and working with uh, partner organizations as they're starting to like ramp up specifically uh, method standardization work. So we're really excited to be here today. Um, so. I guess just to get back to this, um, as the ocean litter strategy process was wrapping up, this bill was introduced into the legislature called SB 1263. Um, and it was approved in September of 2018. And essentially, it requires us to develop and implement a microplastic strategy. Um, the requirements in the bill are for us to assess the ecological risks of microplastics and develop um, a risk assessment framework investigate sources and pathways of microplastics, and evaluate options to reduce microplastic pollution and recommend policy. So as you might have noticed, the requirements of our ocean litter strategy and of SB 1263 are really similar. Um, so we're going to be developing one document and strategy to meet the requirements of both of those things and move forward from there. Um, the big takeaway from this slide, I'd say, is that we're going to have to be doing multiple things at once to meet our legislative deadlines. Um, we're going to be developing a comprehensive prioritized research plan and a risk assessment framework and focusing on methods standardization and validation. Um, and then from there, we're going to be moving into characterizing ambient concentrations and assessing environmental impacts and sources and pathways. And then towards the end of our implementation period, we'll be moving towards policy recommendations. Uh, before I wrap up, I just wanted to do a brief shout out to a couple of other things that are going on. Um, and the first is that San Francisco Bay Microplastic Study. Um, they are wrapping that study up and are having an October 2nd symposium. So if you guys are interested, I would encourage you to reach out to the San Francisco Estuary Institute. Um, and the other is a lab methods validation study that's being run by the Southern California Coastal Water Research Project. Um, and Shelly is here and I will just I guess put her on the hot seat for any questions you guys have about that. <laughs> um, so just to wrap up, science and foreign policy and management is critical. Um, there are some obvious things we can do in the meantime, like say the wash off microbees ban, we shouldn't be putting little pieces of plastic out into the ocean. We all know that. Um, but in terms of moving forward, I think getting the, sci getting the scientific information to really deal with the highest priority aspects of the microplastics problem is really critical. Um, and standard, developing standard methods and baseline information are my agency's next immediate steps. Uh, so thank you. Thank you.